Now this instrument, you cannot do anything with this instrument. You can't measure anything. About all you can do is bird watch with it. Unless you have one of these. This is the power. Uh, like I said, the predecessor T16 with a strap-on EDM and a car battery used to make that the predecessor to this total station. Well, instead of lugging a car battery around, we have this battery. This battery only fits in one direction. It won't fit this way, it won't fit this way. It's keyed to fit in one direction. Simply push it in and turn the knob 90 degrees. It latches in. Before we turn it on, this thing has a keypad and display. and has a big target bubble up in the top. First thing you want to do is get the instrument approximately level according to the target bubble. Otherwise, it'll go to tilt. It's kind of like the laser. It will not function. It won't function if it's uh, very far out of level. So it'll, it'll uh, go to tilt like a pinball machine. So I get the target bubble, bubble centered in the target bullseye right up here. And this instrument is pretty convenient to operate. Uh, it has a horizontal lock, uh, which is a lever. Simple, about one quarter turn locks it or less, and this is a tangent screw. So, when I'm operating it, and I'm worried about the horizontal position of the instrument, it has an optical side on top of it, just like the T16. So I use the place the white crosshair close, lock the lever, and then as I look through the scope, the tangent screw is very close at hand. So I can lock, unlock, and use the tangent screw. My fingers are together. The same with the vertical. The lever here, I unlock it. I can position my target, lock it down, and use the tangent screw to move this instrument up and down smoothly. This tangent screw moves it horizontally. Uh, so the controls are very, very, very uh, convenient. Uh, the very end of the eyepiece is the crosshair focus, so we focus that as we look through it and get a very sharp crosshair. Then the ring just behind the eyepiece is the objective focus. So again, those controls are very close. Uh, so we have the instrument reasonably level, and on this keypad, oh, another thing about this vertical, uh, this scope will not flip 360 degrees. It has a stop. And it only goes down this far in this direction. If it flips 360 degrees, it's broken. Okay. Next, uh, we have an on button. It says enter and on. And it comes up with a display. It has horizontal angle, vertical angle, horizontal distance, and vertical distance. Uh, so, uh, to uh, uh, previously with a T16 to set zero, uh, it was uh, a little bit more involved. You had to rotate the instrument, uh, look through the vertier. Uh, this is how quick it is to set this instrument to zero. I hit menu. Set one means number one for set horizontal. Hit one. Input, whatever angle I want, zero degrees, enter the hole. I now have zero in the instrument, no matter where I turn. So it's menu, one, zero, enter the hole. Then it tells you to release the angle to make a, a measurement. You hit enter to release. So once I'm on my target and I'm ready to turn to another object, I have to hit enter to release, then I turn and it will actually count horizontal degrees. So we now have it, uh, we're going to escape from that. Uh, what we need to do is get it on point and we need to get it precisely level. This has electronic levels in it. So, and it doesn't have an optical plummet. There's nothing to look through. 
So we have a little headlight feature button. If I push that in and hold it, it double beeps and the laser plummet comes on. You can see it on my shoe or on the ground. And we have levels. The object is kind of just the opposite of AT&T. We want no bars between the arrows. So I have a set of arrows going this way and a set of arrows going this way with, if I have no bars, then it's perfectly level. So, the first thing we want to do is get the thing on point. So I need to move this laser over. To do that, I can do it a number of ways. I can use the same technique I did on the T16. I can actually put it on point with the leveling screws, then I have to re-level qu quickly. A lot of times these instruments will go to tilt, and then you have to escape and start all over again. So the preferred method for this, it has a little timer. When it's out of level for a specific period of time, it'll go to tilt. So the preferred method would be, to, uh, I want to uh, look at this as though that laser is a straight beam of light. And if I lengthen this leg, it's going to move the laser away when I re-level the instrument. If I shorten the leg, that's going to put this laser at this attitude, and then when I re-level the instrument, it will move back. So I want to move the laser towards the leg, I'm going to shorten it. And I shorten it about half the distance that I want to move it up this leg. So I grasp the leg, I lock it, and I relax it, oh, about that much. And then I quickly re-level with the target button. You can see the laser moved over and it's almost on the intersection of the tiles. So, I'm going to move it just a little more. I'm going to re-level with the target bubble only. Now I'm very close to on point. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get the electronic levels to agree. To do that, I need to get these set of arrows in line with these two leveling screws. And to do that, I can normally put this face plate maybe in line with these screws or turn it here and get it in line with these. For the display of the camera, I'm going to try to line it up. So that you can see looks like. Now I only need to use one screw at a time and I use the left thumb rule. I want the bars to go away between these arrows and then I'm going to use this level screw for these, this direction. Now the instrument is perfectly level. I have two arrow heads pointing this way and two pointing this way with no little bars in between. Now then, I look at my point and I'm off point slightly. So next I need to loosen this mounting screw and with, again, without rotating the instrument, I'm going to slide it. Now my laser's on point and I need to come back and check my level. A very minor adjustment will fix it. Now it's perfectly level, it's on point. I hit escape and turn the laser off. The laser is the most consuming portion of the operation on the battery. So the quicker you learn how to set this instrument up and get that laser turned off, the more battery you'll have to do work. The next thing we want to do is I am going to go set the instrument to zero, menu, one, zero, enter the hole. I lock the horizontal. Again, I'm going to target the same targets I had the last time. 